In the first video, that is part zero of the series, we had got introduced to transformer neural networks. In part one of the series, we discussed the importance of word order information and introduced position embeddings. So as to understand that better, we had decided to build a fun dialog completer using transformers and use it to complete Cersei Lannister's famous dialog when he played the Game of Thrones. To do that, we had passed our input text to the embedding layer, we had then added the position information to our word embeddings, and the resultant position aware embeddings were passed to the next layer. In this video, we will proceed further and discuss the most important component of transformer neural networks, the multi-head attention layer, which, let me warn you in advance, is a powerful multi-headed beast. Let us begin by understanding why do we need attention? Imagine I showed you this line. She faced her enemies and whispered, Dracatus. And then I ask you, which Game of Thrones character are we referring to here? To answer that question, your mind will most likely not pay equal attention to all the words in the sentence. In fact, if you've watched the show, the word Dracatus should be enough to tell you that this person is none other than Daenerys Targaryen, who says that word each time she wants her dragons to rain fire on her enemies. And so, the attention mechanism helps the model to focus on important words in a given input sentence. But Transformers did not steal the show using simple attention. Their weapons of choice is called self-attention. Consider this sentence. He went to the bank and learned of his empty account after which he went to a river bank and cried. Note how the same word bank means two different things. Here the first occurrence of the word bank is referring to a finance institution, while the second bank refers to the side of a river. So how can a model know which bank refers to what? Well, the same way we humans do. We judge the meaning of a word by paying attention to the context in which it appears. For instance, an empty account can indicate that the first occurrence of the word bank means a financial institute. The word river indicates that its second occurrence means a river bank. Likewise, the meaning of every word can be regarded as the sum of the words it pays the most attention to. Now the difference between simple attention and self-attention is that simple attention selectively focuses on words with respect to some external query. The more important a word is in determining the answer to that query, the more focus it is given. Self-attention, on the other hand, also takes the relationship among words within the same sentence into account. And this is the layer where attention computations happen. So let us zoom in and understand the components of the multi-head attention layer. The first component in this block are three linear layers. A linear layer is simply composed of a bunch of fully connected neurons without the activation function. They may serve two main purposes. Number one, mapping inputs onto the outputs. Number two, changing the dimensions of the inputs themselves. Let us make this more concrete by considering the example of a single position aware word embedding. But first, we'll need to transpose it before we feed it to the linear layer. There you go. Each of the five dimensions of the embedding vector will get to the linear layer nodes as input. Note how the final output size shrunk from 5 to 3. This is because in this example, our linear layer is composed of only three neurons. One of many reasons why you may want to change, especially shrink the dimensions of an embedding vector, is to save on the computation cost. The larger the vector, the more operation it requires. Upon doing a little more scrutiny of the linear layer, you'll see that each node is connected to the inputs using its own set of weights. So what are these weights? Well, these are just scalar numbers that the model updates during backpropagation as it gets better and better at the downstream task, which in our case is dialog generation. It is also important to point out that these weights are fed to the model as a matrix. Great. So we are done looking at the functionality of a single linear layer. 
But the transformers have three separate linear layers. Why is that? Turns out that each one of these layers has a special function. We call them the query, the key, and the value linear layers. This can be partially motivated by the way retrieval systems work. You often type search requests on YouTube, don't you? Let us call your request a query. Now let us assume that YouTube's search algorithm is quite simplistic. What it does is simply go through all video titles in its database. These titles can be termed as the keys. Now, so as to find the best matches, it will have to compute some sort of similarity between your query and the corresponding keys. Once the most similar key has been found, it returns the video affiliated with that key. We will call the contents of a video its value. Notice how similarity can be thought of as a proxy to attention. This is because the model returns the best video only by paying attention to the most similar video title when compared to the search query. Great, but how do we compute similarity between a query and a key? A great way to compute similarity between two vectors is via the cosine similarity. And since we have been dealing with a bunch of vectors anyway, why not use it? Cosine similarity varies from a range of plus one to minus one, where plus one means two vectors point in exactly the same direction, while minus one means they point in the opposite direction. Here is how it works. If two vectors point in exactly the same direction, the angle between them will be zero. And if you remember your high school trigonometry, cosine zero is equal to one. That is, these two vectors have maximum similarity. Now the cosine similarity reduces as the vectors start parting ways. And the maximum dissimilarity occurs if they point in complete opposite directions. Cosine similarity between two vectors can also be obtained by taking the dot product between the elements of the two vectors and then dividing by their magnitudes for scaling purposes. More generally, we can rewrite our equation like so. Now, if you are to compute the similarity between matrix elements instead of vectors, we'll have to transpose the second matrix to avoid conflicts in dimensions during matrix multiplications. And since we are dealing with queries and keys, let us plug those in in our equation. Awesome, but how does that tie back to our attention layer? And what exactly should we feed to our query, key, and value linear layers? Well, to the query layer, we feed our position-aware embeddings. We then make two more copies of our embeddings and feed the same to the key and the value layers. I know, that makes no sense. Because in the YouTube example, didn't the queries and the keys and the values mean different things and had very different contents? So why then here are we using the same content as input to the query, key, and the value layers? Well, that is where the self-attention part comes into play. Let us take our three embedding copies and neatly put them on the side. We then pass them through each of the linear layers. And all that means is that we multiply our embedding layers with the weights of the linear layers. Note that each linear layer has its own set of weights. Since the matrix multiplication will require certain dimensions, we will have to transpose our embedding matrices accordingly. After multiplication, each linear layer outputs a new matrix. And these are called the query, the key, and the value matrices. For now, let us focus on only the query and the key matrices because remember how only the query and the keys were used in our video retrieval example to compute the similarity. We therefore first do a simple dot product between our query and the transpose of our key matrix. The output of this dot product can be called an attention filter. Since this is a very important output, let us zoom in and understand its contents. At the start of the training process, the contents of the attention filter are more or less random numbers. But once the training process is done, they take on more meaningful values. If you look closely, the scores inside this matrix are in fact attention scores. 
For example, let us consider the row corresponding to the word game. The highest attention a word pays is usually to itself for it is the most similar to itself. The next highest attention score is given to the word which is the next most similar to it. In this example, that word is play. Finally, we scale our attention scores. The authors of the Attention is All You Need paper divided the score by the dimension of the key vector. In our example, that is 7. Finally, we squash our attention scores between the values of 0 and 1 using a softmax function. And we get our final attention filter. Let us take a quick recap of what we've done so far. We created three copies of our embeddings. We pass one of those duplicates through the value linear layer and got a value matrix. We pass the remaining embedding copies through the query and the key linear layers and scale the results to get an attention filter. So we now have our original value matrix, which pretty much represents the original embedding information because we did not alter them much except for passing them through a single linear layer. On the other hand, we have our attention filter with attention scores that were computed using the dot product between the query and the key matrices. All right, great. But why on earth did we go through all of this? What is the purpose of this attention filter? What is the point of this value matrix? Well, even though we are dealing with NLP, it is much easier to understand the intuition behind this using computer vision. Suppose you are Avatar Aang from the most awesome anime on the planet, Avatar The Last Airbender. Anyhow, so you are going about doing your Avatar business that suddenly you see this. Now, if your brain were to process all the information in the frame pixel by pixel, by the time you reach just 10% of the frame, you will most likely be blasted off your skin by lightning bolts. That is because this is none other than Princess Azula of the Fire Nation, the most awesome evil princess there ever lived. Yeah, Cersei, you better be scared. And therefore, thank God that our brains work much faster. Rather than taking all the information in, they filter out the unnecessary background information and zoom in to focus on what truly matters in that moment and in that context. And if you look closely, the final filtered image is actually a combination of two frames, an attention filter and the original image. That is, if you multiply the pixel of the attention filter with the original image, you get the filtered image with all the unnecessary details thrown away. In the same way, when we multiply our attention filter with the value matrix, we get a filter value matrix which assigns high focus to the features that are more important. And this filtered value matrix is the final output of our multi-head attention layer. Well, almost. There is one more detail. Remember how we said that the multi-head attention is a multi-headed beast? We have currently dealt with just a single head. There are two more heads to go. So why do we need more than one head? Let us get back to our Princess Azula's example. The first filter had helped us to focus on who was in the image. But as I told you before, she's a super villain. And so if you are the avatar, you may want to weigh your options carefully. Maybe you may also want to focus on the clear skies behind her to see if you could use some of your awesome airbending skills to blow her away. Or maybe you could also use your earthbending skills to bury her under those rocks. Similarly, Transformers don't learn one attention filter. They learn multiple, each focusing on a different linguistic phenomenon. Each attention head therefore outputs its own attention filter, which in turn outputs its own filtered value matrix, each zooming in on a different combination of linguistic features. In the original Transformers paper, the authors used a total of eight attention heads. We will, however, stick to three. Awesome, so what do we do next? We simply go ahead and concatenate them together. Since we don't want this vector to grow longer and longer with each head used, we pass it through a linear layer to shrink its size back to seven by five. 
And this is the final output of the multi-head attention layer. That's it. It is on the back of these multi-headed dragons that Transformers were able to conquer the kingdom of NLP. In the third and the final part of this series, we will discuss the remaining components as well as the Transformers Decoder's Masked Attention module. Until then, Valar Dohares.